special board meeting to order with the flag of state. here this evening I know we have some gentlemen here from um, Officer Perez so Tommy or Tina and uh, Gina and uh, Mark um, are on the line as well um, I will uh, entertain a motion to approve this evening's agenda <laughs> motion made by director Mike Garza do I have a second 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 by director Axton discussion Five to zero. Moving on to item B one. I do not believe there is a civilian or citizen to request to speak. So. Okay. Moving on to item C one. Recommendation to award center court um, discuss uh, discussion. I'm sorry, docket item.
That is, that's correct. Um, the way it was set up was um, that the uh, first four courts would be completed, obviously. The next two follow-on courts, um, essentially, if the district at some point in the future wanted to do the paving work, that all the base is ready to go. So it's all there in place, and so the amount, the scope of work is different from the base bid to these ultimates. And yeah, if you just look at that raw number, it does seem ridiculously different, um, but a lot of the base work is already done, so it's just a paving and surfacing exercise. Did, did the board remember that was what we knew it was going to happen? It was going to be four points or two points, what we heard last time, on the base bid? sure exactly why it was set up that way um, other than the fact that the equipment's there it's easiest to do it at this point and then it allows any future additions to just roll into place there's also a little bit of um, because the way the tennis courts surface is relative to the existing gravel surface it allows those two surfaces and edges to marry up easier if they can align 
And so there's a little bit of that transition period that occurs as well. So it just kind of simplifies a lot of what's going on there. I just feel a little bit like it kind of puts us in a position where why wouldn't we do the next two course? Because half the work's done. I don't worry about the equipment. I'm not worried about it. What, so what that cost is, I don't know. You know, if it was less as is versus the important. And that's an easy deduction for the, the, the board so chooses. So uh, for me, I just wanted to know what, it, what the cost would be before I make, and, and if I would now approve two more courts, You've already paid for a lot of the costs. So say for instance, and I don't know if this is necessarily the case, but say it takes another two or three. the timing to find out that number, the true number, if you just did four courts and then finish up with the three or two? Um, May. Yeah, it would be May, I guess. Yeah, we'd have to talk with personnel and have them talk to the council. I know when we did the traffic at the transportation center, we did some driving in there. But oh, right. Yeah. And I'm not saying that we idea of what those extra two courts are going to cost. And I, and I agree with you. Um, and so I think it's something that they need to take a look at after the fact to find out what, what the cost is and not uh, pressure them into doing something that they don't have time to do or to go that route. when I was checking my notes is that Vicki Fountain costs like 40,000 bucks. I thought that was supposed to be an alternate. It was an alternate last time when they did the project and they had three courts. Mm, no, I think it came in as, I don't, I don't have the figures right in front of me. I looked at them earlier today, so I'm just going off of memory. I thought they were more like $5,000 for. 40,000 I think was for the slab for the construction and, and the Vicki Fountain was, all put together. Yeah, and I think that was just for construction. Yeah, right. It was an alternate last time. Yeah, it was. So in this one, the alternate of the concession includes pl plumbing to the concession and the pad and everything because we had talked about taking that out. Correct. Yeah. So that's the everything to build that concession center, not just putting the concession center on a, a slab that's already poured. That, that alternate, I guess. Yeah, so the alternate, we 
Based on that, uh, what you're telling me there, it sounds like then uh, everything would be under one spot. That would be where you would have to make a concession stand for people. Correct? The stolen base bid in the middle of the And then the alternate bid is going to provide and install a complete structure, power, data, and utilities. And the proposed bid number one and associated
I think the main thing for us, we just wanted to completely separate concessions and everything that went with it. What would have cost to build the concession building to have completely separate off, uh, off ramp? You know, and w there'd be two options, you know, if we, um, you know, if we obviously accept the uh, base bid is we could, we could just look at relocating and getting all the uh, underground to the, you know, your guys' possible location, move north. Or we could also have them just uh, deductive uh, change order out to all the underground. But I, I, I kind of, I worry that that might not be a good option because of how much it could cost in the future to, to the city. Because once it's tore up, this is the time to get all the underground in. Yeah, so um, under alternate number one, it includes um, the sewer connection. And then the water service is, base bid is a three quarter domestic. And then under the alternate, it upsizes to a two inch domestic. And I think the three quarters just goes to a drinking fountain that's part of base bid. Right. Did we get these? Before, before we made the changes, we never saw that, correct? Mm -hmm. You're talking about that study going into the board? Yeah, that has, the, we, after we had said what things we wanted out, we saw the original recommendation, then we made the changes, and we, we saw them again. What, what kind of uh, timing were we looking at for approving this? What, what if this is the base of the next meeting so we can kind of leave it? Um, I don't know. I know the I know the contractors are they're wanting to get started because we have a we have a completion date of November thirtieth in there. Yeah, what is the date? Uh, November thirtieth could be kind of pushing possibly depending on the weather on yeah. w whether or not we can actually uh, get the surfacing done. So the surfacing might actually have to uh, take place early spring, but it would not. I mean, it would be done before tenant season. So, you know, I we'll thought just that was one of the contingent too. The well, surfacing. It is. But tenants, I think, it starts before the weather, weather really starts getting decent. Well, it just depends on the year down there. I mean, if we have a winter like last winter, yeah. it's not going to be good. Right. Um, yeah. That's pretty rare though. kind of looked at, you know, when once the asphalt goes down, how many weeks it has to sit before that surface can actually be applied. But the temperatures also have to be favorable for, I think, is it three or four days? Well, certainly while the application's going down. So right. my, at least when we were, we were driving down, trying to talk about the schedule and what that would be, um, if, if we could get the contract going by the 1st of August, have them mobilize, that would allow them to do the earthwork in the underground and probably by mid September at the latest they could fully do it and surface it and we would still be able to get all the work done for the year. My, my concern would be the vegetation and the upper layers and potentially leaving some bleeding into one of the six six months to push it back that much further and make a little bit more margin in the tenant court side and impact the building. Uh, but I think what would be important surfacing done this year to make that a priority because it can really function independent of the concession building if that's accepted. Um, but finishing November 30th is really kind of not, it would be nice to have done it in October. Well, even if, but if there's questions the board has that you'd like me to answer, I don't know if we have to wait two weeks this year. I mean, this is something that I feel we need to get right now with these owners and just prior to that. I can do it this year. I know, but you have to talk, talk about a few days here. I think that would be fine. But it's just like we're not seeing what we're going to do. What information is going to be big enough to raise? I don't know. I don't know because I don't know what these extra costs are. Yeah. I Good guess I'm just. Today. If you just divided that, if you divided that number by four, the way I was saying, which is, which is 
would, there's no way we'd have more savings than that. That I could come up with fifty thousand dollars just to get my thing set in place here. So it's somewhere less than that. Right. That you call it a change. Right. Forty thousand total. Right. And it would be somewhere less than that. So I'm, I'm saying the difference between not doing the groundwork for those other two boards but contributing the bid is somewhere less than fifty thousand. Which is not, I'm not saying that's not significant, I'm saying that what, what it costs to bring the equipment to be mowed in the future if they want to transfer right. it to a different place is going to cost probably uh, I'm just saying I, it, at, at best, I mean, that's it's yeah. going to take 50000 off the base bid, and I, and I think it's probably going to be more like forty or thirty five. Well, I think one thing that I've <coughs> pulled out of base bid, though, is, is um, I, I think we need to really look at the location of the potential <coughs> concession stand because I just don't see it going in. I don't either, but I'm, I guess I'm, in my view, we can just do a, right, the order to take it out. Yeah. Mm. And just, and to release the underground, you know, there's going to be a little bit of savings, but probably not a huge, but I mean, it's not really that much work. But to do it will, will just cost a, a lot more. So I almost, I almost think that we keep it in the base bid to just move it to a different location. Well, I don't claim but to know where the best location is either. I just think that that's something that will come with time that probably the people yeah. involved with it yeah. will say, you know, the best place for a concession would be in this area. Right. And it might not be the area that we're talking about spending money to run. Well, yeah, it's, it's, two or two. it's a gamble. I mean, but, but I guess if I'm understanding it right, we can still approve it and we can ask what it will cost to delete it oh, and yeah. then make that decision then. Well, either delete it or move it. See, see we could we could find out. You know, to move it's probably not going to be a whole or lot that, more. I mean, isn't that? Well, I'm hopeful for leaving it. That's I'm not saying. I'm just saying once we can approve it tonight and still get that number and then right. make that decision. Yeah. yeah, I'm fine with that. My deal with the course. I mean, I had mentioned I wanted to have four and two alternates. A big reason because we were talking about having a high school, possibly on a different location. Now the recommendation coming back to us is that we just expand our high school space there. So I, I'm definitely not against six sports there. I just I like to approve something that I really know what the cost is. And I just not I feel like I'm a little bit I'm making some guesses here and I just don't like to do that. So that's my bigger issue with it. Okay, well any more, more any more questions for the gentleman from Architects West? If not, we can have a board discussion. Consensus of uh, as to where we want to, what we want to do, and where we want to go here. Okay. If there isn't any more questions, then. Um, what I'm hearing from, uh, what I think I'm hearing is that. Uh, we want to uh, make <coughs> a selection or and go with or without that al alternate uh, director Hillman's of the concession stand. What I would like to see personally is uh, alternate the base bid for alternate number two, three, eight, and four. Which is option like the option B. Essentially, that was, I went back and looked, that was essentially the, the recommendation last year, but it's $260,000 cheaper. Right, exactly. So I would say that was the right call. Yeah. <coughs> Which I also, honestly, I didn't want to just do a one off. That's just dumb. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, the bid uh, environment right now is extremely. I'd just call it cost. poor side of the board. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I would agree. <laughs> so we all heard Director Hillman say. So I would just, just to clarify, option B, if we don't include alternate one, we would be doing a, oh, what's it called, a deduction, a deduction, deduction COP. of the prep work for the concession stand regardless? Possibly. We could. Potentially. We can, yeah. What we, we can do is, uh, when I issue that 
it's not a, a direction to have them delete it, but to, for them to give the price, okay. and then you guys decide. Yeah. Once yeah. you see the Every price, say, you know what, for that, keep it in. Or, yeah, that's worth it, but let's remove it. So I, 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 would, I would agree with option number one. Yeah. So um, I have a, Gina, you have the capital funds balance listed on here. Is there any anything that uh, we have, any projects we have dedicated out of that money right now? Set aside inside there for technology or anything. I thought there was some technology stuff set aside inside the capital projects that needed some money. No, no all the technology, all the one to one um, instrumentation is vetted through the general fund, and then the technology um, infrastructure set aside. If those are the only two options, I think we ought to be, but I'm, I still want to think of those options too for Derek because I know he's counting on me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I think that B makes the most sense to me. I've, I've shared my concerns about it, but B makes the most sense. And I like the, op the option of, of concessions in the, in the future, but maybe we, we know, uh, we, we find out where the best location would be for us. We, maybe that's something we can do like this. What surface are we using for the courts? Are we using that cement stuff or the pavement? I, I can't remember. It's a, it's a Betsy grade. Okay. There's no yeah. top. The top one is Betsy self grade. But no, the top. There was. I know there was yeah. different kinds, and the tenants chose the kind of preference they wanted. Yeah, yeah. I know there was a post tension concrete, which is very expensive. We actually had that as our alternate last time we bid, and it was one of the. That number from Rob. Wait until we get to item C3 in the consent agenda to to, uh, to vote for which option you want to go with, since this is just a discussion item. Um, we will move on to, unless there's any other questions, move on to item C2 for further recommendation discussion.
the work we could have been focused on the future major school district. Um, their, the um, presentation addressed all items that were communicated on um, I believe it's April 11th to show the meeting and to the 19th meeting on the 31st. So those are highlighted in the um, four chart that you see. Um, so calling them out as the team meeting was very interested in addressing the overcrowding as soon as possible. Interested in getting construction as soon as possible. Interested in that number out of the pocket, Jenna? Pardon me? Where's the 66 million number? So that question? in the attachment, yeah. there are, um, there's a, uh, attachment A, which is has four documents. It has the summary, project cost, plan street map, and rental dollars. And then it has a bond authorization summary sheet gotcha. for 55 million. And then it has a tax rate analysis So when is that, uh, when are we supposed to know on that number? It's on your notes it showed June 30th. I thought, we, I thought the budget was passed. The state budget for the general operating was, but the capital budget was not. And, and, and the notes in the CO indicate that it could be in two weeks or probably even July, but there's been no um, communication or update on when that, when we can expect that to pass. Is that?
why they were moving to the max mode. Um, there's always a question of school districts on front funding to stay max versus um, you know going out for the, the amount of bonds you would need minus the state max. When, when we can always request a larger authorization and come to a bigger ask for tax base, of course, but not sell all the bonds if the state comes through, or if you ask for the large amount the state comes through or the more than you need, you have the option of you know repurposing that money for other projects within the, the district. So it's, it's a it's a very interesting time I think of trying to figure out what to do from my side of business personally because we don't really have a lot of clarity of what to do on the state side. So Gina, I, this is Tony again. I guess my question is is in the last board meeting at least I thought the board but me for sure had talked about uh, that I wanted to see the option of running two separate bonds and uh, it that's seems true. like it seems like to me with this legislative issue that's even more of a reason to do it that way and then we can uh, if the class size reduction comes in we can apply that towards the high school and we can run the second bond if it doesn't then it doesn't yeah and that is um thing that's not clear in there, Gina, um, would be the cost of the athletic field. Um, I know when we were looking at, at estimates uh, a couple months ago, a few months ago, one thing that was included in that was that $5 million in infrastructure costs that we're assuming is going to we're going to have to uh, expend no matter what we built there. But in the end, then, what is the what would the true cost of the athletic complex be minus those infrastructure costs? We don't have that information. I mean, it will, the scenario that, or the um, information that the next school year key date has, I think it's note number three on the summary sheet from CSD, the infrastructure allowance of five million um, and the athletic field allowance of five million. So it's included in the K-5, six, eight, Be safe it, would, to it would set up as an amount for whatever the design of an athletic complex is going to end up being. So I guess I want to make sure I understand this. When you read that down there, I assume they're both supposed to say K-8. One says K-8 and the other one says K-9. There's 10 million total. Is the other one, is one in the high school and one in the, in the K-8? Or how, is it five and five in that thing? Or is it 10 million all on the... On the K K eight K five six ten, eight or whatever. The ten million is a five million dollar allowance for infrastructure, and the athletic allowance of five million. So a total of ten million dollars is included in the first project by heaven. It's on the new. So my question is, is if we wanted to pull that out, I assume we'd want to have the infrastructure cost in there anyway, because we're, because that's when they're doing it, and then push the other yep. five million out, because that's an architect's. Does that make sense from an architect's perspective? I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So they've got it. They've got. I have a hard time selling the community. I don't want this whole thing to sink because the community says we don't want a football field. So now we're not going to build a K-8 school because we don't want a football field. That's that's where my hesitation comes. Okay. I don't want to. I don't want the bond to fail because the community doesn't want a football field. Now we don't have a place for those kids to. Well, that, but it could be the other way around too. Do you think the fewer well, people would vote for the football field? Sign me up. Could be. <laughs> That's an interesting way to look at it. Yeah. Um, what's going on in that? Well, and, and part of it is just find out what your community wants. Um, and then maybe 
Also, do we have till November before we're going to have a, uh, a recommendation for how we're going to run the bond on the ballot, right? Um, yes, the, the next group on our committee is educating and putting together our ethics and you know, teaching for throughout the community. But the actual resolution has to be filed. I don't have the exact date. It'll be in December or the February. She can't put out motions in six ten now and then saying there's going to be an eighty million. Talking print material and stuff that you're doing, Gina. that we'll be partnering with you and them and, and um, outreach 
with the Citizens for Oklahoma Schools, which is the bond campaign committee that can actually go out, make the statements of how you vote one particular way, where the citizens can't do that for PDC rules. rules. So I wonder if I answered your question, sir. Is this, is this the same CSG that we've used in the past? Is this, is this a different committee? Well, con Construction Services Group, which is CSG, is a um, entity within the Educational Services District 112, which is over in Vancouver. So yeah, that's the, that's the company that Dax works for. Um, our person is a, our finance advisor works out of there, and then um, the marketing team that I'm referencing, I'm not sure our, if, they're, if it's just CSG or if it's a, associated with the whole ESG 112. Oh, ESG. Um, Dax and CSG, um, just just doing the research. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, Jane, I'll just add that uh, just a little bit so that education service district 112, um, the CSG group, construction services group, is what who Dax has uh, been intimately involved with for, for many years. It's been involved in uh, facility planning around the state of Washington for quite some time. And an outgrowth of that and with other work that the CSG does with the State with the communication series that helps with things that Gene mentioned, M and O levy information, but just just community, general community outreach within uh, school districts to have communication specialists that smaller districts can call upon uh, to help do work, work that you know the Seattle's and North Shores of the world will have a full time staff to do that. Um, and then there's an outgrowth of that about three years ago. Our the charge that we're paying for CSG, Gene? Um, I don't have, we don't have a contract yet for uh, the, we're in the early conversations for the, in front of, I know the work that was done for the M&O levy was under $2,000 for the marketing work. And this doesn't uh, bind us in any way when we get, if we pass the bond in using CSG as a construction management company? No, well, um, I believe in the timeline I provided uh, one or two board meetings ago, immediately following passing the bond, we'll put out an RFP for, or an RQ for architect and project management. So we'll go through a selection process an architect too? Uh, I believe that was the recommendation that was communicated to me that will have architects left in CSG. Well, I, I, I believe Great we'll news. get them <laughs> in the because, because they've got a good relationship with the district and they know our district and they are, know our facilities. Um, my understanding was we were going to do an RFQ for, for both okay. services on the other side of the lawn. Okay. Board members have any other questions? Yeah, what are we asking for? Are, you, are we asking for approval to, to go to bond tonight? <coughs> what else do we want to do? Yes, sir. Okay. If that's the case, I, I'm, for me, my personally, I'm, I'm uh, pretty entrenched in running two separate bonds unless a board member talks me out of it. Who else do we have three other votes? If I can always get out there. <laughs> so the, I would say, to, to play the devil's advocate, one thing that concerns me about that is that you do a, an MLO levy that some people thought was a bond, and then you do a bond in February, and they say, didn't we just pass one of those? And, and then you do a third bond, 
And I know that it, just, it, it can be confusing, but that would be my only concern. And then somewhere in there is the next interval button. Yeah. That should be the year after, right? It'd be three, yeah. So it could potentially be four years in a row. It just depends on how it all works out. Well, also, we don't know when we'd run another, uh, but there's two bonds in the first place, one for a K-8 and one for remodeling and adding to the high school. That's two. And then in your scenario, you're saying a third one for the athletic complex, no, right? No. Okay. No, I'm not saying that. I personally would rather have the athletic complex included in the second bond, <coughs> but if it's top prohibited, it's built that way. So. Well, and I think some of that's from might be the feedback we get from the community also. Right, and it's part of the clarification for that drop to happen in the bond committee. Yeah, we're being asked to. In, in my mind, that the athletic complex, complex of the high school is the key. And so in my, in my mind, I know I'm not as smart as most people, but in my mind as a community member, we've got a K-8 issue and a high school issue, and then we're, we're solved on the high school issue and have K-8 in our mind. Yeah. From my view. I thought you were talking about three. I thought you were talking about having the, uh, <laughs> the athletic one and the separate no, one. That I was just, concern. In my mind, I just, had, I just have a hard time explaining to the public why the sports complex is so important that we have to do it in the first bond instead of the second bond. That's, all, that's my only issue. What do you think, Director of Illness? You know, it would have been nice to actually. Well, the football chair is why I just said they're all going to be on. Right. But it, it, you know, what it would have been nice is to already have passed the. Uh, Bond for the sports facilities. Drew, like point something out. If the K eight budget, individual budget, currently carries five million for infrastructure, right. also the five million. Right. So right. we, we covered that, that one. Yeah. Before you got here, it's the, it could be ten million less to put that. Right. Yeah. Well, 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 no, only you five million. Because oh, you got to have the right. infrastructure. Well, that's right. But that infrastructure might be changing based on what the, the development beside the, beside our property does also. Well, there was also there's also possible implications if the if the we're able to somehow partner in in concept with the city and, and, and usage of those of that space and possibly the, the grants they have access to. So who knows what that five million will be? Yeah. Mark, Mark, what would be your idea of the two separate bonds versus just the one? Um, you know, I've been thinking about that as the discussion has been going on. Honestly, often what I see is you separate the items and you give people the ability to vote for one of them and feel good and vote for the other one and say no. Often the second one is something as a, as a throwaway. So if you really don't think that it's something you want to do, they're, um, they're a year apart, no, you realize that, right? It's not at the same time. Oh, no, okay, it's not at the same time. Okay, I was thinking on the same ballot. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. No, I so it, it would follow a year, a year later, at least. Yeah, but I think it's just a matter of communication with the with um, the community and what you're trying to do. So when you're doing it, the, the first bond that you you present that as this is a multi-phase project. Trying to do it. Here's where we want to be in the future, and that's what the communication people are really good at, at helping craft that message, if you will. So they can help set up, you know, um, some more likely success. And I'm not sure the dollar amount of the second uh, bond issues for the sports facility, Gina, do you uh, or Dax uh, know how much we're going to be talking about for, for that, separating it out? Would be the high school? Well, if we separate, if we take the five million out. 
five million dollar allowance out of the first bond sale and put it in the second bond sale. We reduced the first bond sale by to thirty million and the increase the oh. second one to thirty six. No. I think we're just shifting right. dollars. No, oh, okay, so I thought you were talking about separate authorization amounts that, uh, you know, I mean, whether it's the first bond sale or second bond sale really doesn't make much difference in my mind. It's more of when you ask for voter approval and how much you ask, ask for. It would be the same. I know you, you're, you're referencing the information you provided with the issuance amount, but the, re the um, request for two separate bonds I think we'd be doing the same thing. We'd just be shifting five million, so we would do a, a bond amount from thirty million, and then a bond amount to thirty-six million. Except for, uh, you know, if I'm mis if I'm misunderstanding it, let me know. Except for if that class size reduction comes in, that's another seven million of savings off the second bond that we won't need. Uh, if the class size reduction comes in, actually, it's eleven million. No, because it's is the difference. Attachment A is if 35 million minus 5 is 30, and attachment A is another 7 million less than that. Okay, so attachment million. A, district cost is 23 million. Correct. We're working off the 35 million number and going for a 30 million dollar bond up front. But if it only costs 23, you take the 7 million and you roll it against the second number, the 36. Wait, I'm not following you. We get the 7. Uh, 23? Yeah, you're okay. right. You're right. It's 11 million. Okay. Okay. Sorry. That's all right. 7 plus 11. 23 from 35. 12 million. I'm saying you just you dump that into the second. You'd need less on the second bond amount than we're guessing. Right. You're, you're, oh, you're correct. Yes. Sorry. I, I took the 5 million out before I did my math. First of all, let me see if there's um, what the other board members think about uh, Director Ashton's two bond idea. Uh, I like the idea. I would still like additional feedback from the community that they would like. Because I said we might split it into two the, the athletic, <coughs> the athletic. The five million dollars for the athletic complex might be go with the first one. It might go with the second one. But I think I think we're going to need some feedback from our community to really tell us what what direction we need to go. Uh, my but the other way to think about it, Stuart, I guess from my view is that again, if the if you do the thirty million and the class size reduction comes in, you can spend the extra five million and put in the athletic fund to deal with that one, savings the before you even do the second bond because we already have. The Oh, I see. I see. Right. The board can just authorize it, put the extra seven, 11 million, sorry, in there. You can just, we can just build it with that. But that has to be, we have to let the, know, the public know up front that that's a potential. Otherwise, it looks like the board was just asking for money in the first place to build this athletic complex. We want to make sure that that's not the right. perception. Well, and then it has to be approved by the board, like we did with the, because basically, I like about it is that uh, you know we, we went to the public with options and after hearing the feedback there was a recommendation that came to the board now we have the opportunity to do the same thing with how we're going to run the bond and I think we just need to be open-minded about okay there's different ways we can do this and we need to hear the community and and, uh, and go with what they think they they're the ones who are going to vote so we got to go with what they think is the best way to go so I'm open 
to that, and I'm open to also doing it all at once if that's what the community wants to do. Start the discussion of what we need for the next over the next four years. I saw all this marketing materials and have dollar amount in it. Am I wrong? I don't see why we can't though say this is what we need right. long term. And this is our option. We can run two bonds, we can run one bond. Why can't the marketing material have that? I'm talking to you too, you brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> The, uh, the actual official board action is going to be in the form of a bond election resolution to be pre prepared by your bond council, Jim McNeil of Foster Pepper. So that's when you would have in there uh, the actual bond authorization request in dollar amount. Also in there is what you'd be planning on using uh, state match monies for um, and, you know, a lot of other legal uh, uh, ease that you'll probably have <laughs> on a hard time reading through for uh, 30 pages, but that's the official action the board will take approving uh, the county auditor to hold a special election for uh, for the bond measure. So until that point, Gina, I believe that any action of the board is kind of more of an advisory for you and the district on how to proceed to, to lead up to forming that bond resolution. That's correct. So, so tonight's recommendation. Formal, so it's not formal action then? Well, tonight's recommendation was to get um, board authorization to move forward on the facility recommendation of a K-568 and the existing high school expansion. And then the work that will be done over the next several weeks into November will be the, the fine tuning and getting the feedback as both Tony and Rob and would have asked for from the community of where the sports complex would fall. So this is similar to the facility committee that brought to the board several years ago the formal proposal of this is what the recommendation is of, the, of these two projects. Currently going on that committee, I have no frame of reference for that. That was So my, my concern is is that somehow by disapproving it how it is that uh, two months from now I'm going to show up to a board meeting and it's going to be we're running an $80 million bond and, and uh, we, we're, we're too far down the road now and, and uh, we can't split it. That's, I'm worried about that kind of stuff. So it's not going to come up in a board meeting naturally for this other contract. So by approving the recommendation and consent agenda tonight, Gene, just to clarify Tony's concern, we're not approving the bond measure at one in the amount or anything like that. We are basically That's correct. We're, we're, we're seeking board of direction to move forward with the scenario of a new K-568 and renovation expansion of the high school. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer that question because Lori is going to meet with Dr. Hurst, myself, and several, uh, a team of people that have not been completely compiled yet, and she goes through a whole process of branding and messaging um, to start, basically that's the kickoff, to start the work for the communication out to the community. At that time, I don't believe any kind of marketing materials are done. It's just we're shifting from the work that's been done in the last four months. We've arrived at a, a concept of what we're going to move forward with, and now we start fine-tuning what that marketing message can be. But yes, we're, we didn't work with Lori in the past, but we're going to um, work with her team moving forward. 
So Gina, just yeah, it sounds like what we need to do is uh, have a, a conversation with Lori, make sure there's time to from in this in this timeline to get the community feedback requested by the, the various board members on um, you know one election versus two those those sorts of things to see if that can be done. Okay. And Gina, just for clarification, it sounds to me like really all you need to move forward is consensus from the board rather than having it in consent agenda. Um, that's correct. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Okay. Then we're moving on to item C3, consent agenda. And I will entertain a motion to approve this evening's consent agenda. I move to approve consent agenda with the clarification that item C1-2 um, my motion is to approve option B and then also with the removal of item C1-3 so a motion been made by director Simmons to approve item C1-2 option B and to remove item C1-3 my suggestion would just be to put that in the director discussion so we can get consensus there. And moving C1-3 into director discussion. Slayer, second? Second. So we're approving C1-1 as well, right? Yes. Okay. And with the, um, the note that on approving the uh, tennis court bid that we look at either removing completely or changing the potential location of the concession stand. So moved. And I have to, I'm waiting for a second. Second. Second by Director Mike Garza. Discussion. And I, I'm, we'll, we'll, we'll add what he just mentioned about the director Okay. Hearing none, motion carries five to zero. I heard his eye. So that would have to be corrected. So moving on to item C4, director discussion. I know um, wanted to, Director Simmons to give us an update on the state budget passing and how it affects us. And so I know that after, after you share with us, then I think Gina has some things to add to that as well. I, I think I'll just kind of share the, the general dollar amount that they're talking about right now is that the, the per pupil amount currently or this last year was like 9,900 in our district. And within three years, I believe, it'll be about 12,800. So it's a, close to a 30% increase in per pupil funding. There's still some information that they're trying to uh, hash out. They don't have, they don't have the, the details, but I was actually, what was interesting to me, I was looking at the, the effect it'll have on our tax rates too. And in this proposal, the maximum levy, local levy rate would be $1.50. So right now, I believe we just, approved one at two dollar and fifty cents or something like that going forward. And so for if you go to a dollar fifty, that's a positive for our taxpayers. It's two thousand nineteen though, right? So I saw that there. So it doesn't change from two thousand nineteen. That could be true. That could be true. I don't remember the year that we start. But then the state so there's a state um, rate as well that we pay every year. That's also going to go down significantly. So the effect on the taxpayers I believe in our district would be in a positive way. Gina, you wanted to add to that? Um, yeah, I'll just add a little bit there. I attended a legislative wrap-up session on Friday um, at ESC 123, and the ledge wrap-up is done by OSPI. 
there are several things that the state, that OSPI is still working through, even though the budget was passed, there's a, there's a lot of components that have been completely defined. Um, we will see some increased revenue in several programs in LAP, special ed, bilingual, high cap, um, the majority of the funding increase for basic ed will be in 18, 19 and following years, even though it's only a two year legislative session, they have a four year implementation. Um, so there's, I want more to, more details to share on the 24th when we do the budget presentation, because all the state actually will have our new revenue building tools available um, by the 17th um, of this month. So a lot of news to follow I think in the next two to four weeks as OSPI unpacks what the legislature or what the um, state budget really means for districts. So there's some high level dollars that um, Rob alluded to. There's, there is a lot of um, detailed work that needs to be done for districts to really see that fiscal impact and what year it falls um, and what um, additional requirements are, are tied to those dollars. Welcome. Moving on to um, at our last board meeting, I believe um, Director Ashley brought up uh, a different process that he wanted to take um, moving forward with the approval of monitoring reports. And so we wanted to have that discussion very quickly. I know that we discussed it at our conference in San Diego. And so just so that uh, Director Hilmes is on the same uh, page, could you show us? at the last meeting that we wanted to try and do that tonight. Um, are you talking about the survey on the thing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had just, you were there, weren't you? Last meeting? Really? Yep. Um, I'm trying to get back to the topic. Well, I'm just wanting to do what you were doing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you feel. <laughs> so, um, I guess, does anybody have any thoughts about whether we should do it that way or not? Or keep you having an individual board member? talking about the monitoring response documents and how we wanted to include them uh, in our budget policy review or somewhere where they are signed and we look at them there rather than um, yeah I guess my understanding was is I was going to bring a new policy to their meeting after this one I just didn't remember a lot of that when I wrote that but I could have missed I could have been understanding mm -hmm. well with an amount that was a Great, now um, just we need to get more consensus for Gina to move ahead with the facilities uh, recommendation that we discussed in length. Um, so, Director Hilmes. Yeah, I, I'm all for this K, K568, is that what it's put in here? Mm -hmm. and, and, and move forward with that. I think we need to look at possibility of, of two bonds. I, I, I'm not trying to, I don't want to be so narrow that we're gonna, this is what we're gonna do, but I, th I think we need to move forward with that instead of the high school building at the new location, it's gonna be a new model high school with K-568, and, uh, and we'll just proceed with whatever feedback we get from the community, if you wanna go with two bonds, or if you wanna go with one bond, or, or what, how do you wanna approach that? Okay. I would say the same thing, I would just add that uh, we get very detailed in our uh, education to the public, to our, to our stakeholders, as to what we need when we, when we put this stuff out, what we're after. I'm um, trying to gather, like Sue said, transparency, be as open as we can, and make sure the community members or stakeholders are in the know of what we're trying to, to get accomplished. And like Rob said earlier, uh, not all of a sudden make an assumption that, yeah, you guys said it this way, but you all along were going to be doing it. So just to be very detailed. Uh, the recommendation that came from the facility committee and I support the ideas that have come from the board tonight on how we 
go forward with education and have some potential of uh, one bond, two bonds, depending on what the community would like. There you, there you go, Gina, and so um, move, moving forward is, is the direction of the board, um, so just keep us well informed and, and we'll have more conversations at our uh, next board meetings uh, as to the communication with the, and the, the community involvement as well, and the options that have been discussed. You were going to say, Gina? Okay. Oh. Thank you. Okay. Thank, thanks, Mark. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thanks, Mark. Great, yeah, I appreciate the opportunity to, to chime in here. And I've actually, while we've been on the phone, I've been kind of emailing Lori over, how you back and forth on the communication side as well. So we're trying to keep things moving. Right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Gina. Yeah, separate it out, which is this is the cost of this, and let and then maybe in our communication to community say, well, what would you rather have it? Would you rather have it in that first bond, second bond, not at all, and get feedback that way as an option. Yeah. I, I'm all for giving, get, giving some options, getting feedback on you know, really interesting. Because you might, I mean, Zora might be right, but you may might say, no, we've needed this for a long time, let's do it as, let's do it as a first bond, I, I don't know. That might be the second thing. That you're right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying to make a decision on it the way I'm saying right. you're going to need to run another model by comparing the right. split and bond so we have your numbers to look at. So yeah. I could run it, take it out of the KA, put it in the high school, take it out of the KA, take it out of the high school, and separate lines, you know. So we've already got scenario one. Scenario two could be with Yes, they're that shift, but there are two different times, potentially two different bonds. So it would affect. You change the timeline a little bit more because of debt capacity or what? Well, that's why I need to run the budget. So then I go back to Mark and then he can see the debt capacity wise and see what the regional plan is coming out. Yeah, so you can see all three. Yeah, it is. It's just how you want to structure it. I'll just show it once phase one, two, three, and then I'll show it phase one and part of two. I already show it for them. All right, perfect. That would be great. Yeah. All right. I like that. Okay. Moving down to item G1, entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved. The motion has been made by Director Mike Garvey to adjourn. Second? Second. Second by Director Ashton. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 5 0. We are adjourned. Thank you, gentlemen, for being here. Thanks. Yep, thanks.